So now we are at a crucial point, and uh, I think uh, I ask uh, a few participants, they are representing uh, parts of uh, the stakeholders and uh, research, and uh, when I see, when I go back to the first day and try to remember Richard's uh, presentation, then we are a bit closing the cycle uh, today. And uh, I would like to ask you, Richard, for a few observations uh, after listening to all the presentations and the way forward. Thank you very much. Um, I've had a very enjoyable few days. Um, we listened to a lot of presentations. It's been incredible the amount that you've managed to pack in without it seeming tiresome. There's been a constantly changing agenda, um, multidisciplinary, dance to art to science. It's been really, really wonderful. And that's been very, very informative. I think that there's a very strong consensus in the room. It seems to me it's very clear that there is a major problem here. It's a problem for human health, it's a problem for our economy, and it has substantial impacts on wildlife. That seems pretty much without question. I've not heard anybody challenge that. It also seems agreed that there is a range of appropriate solutions. And although there are quite a few, in most cases, we've managed to knock those down to about 10 for each of the regional areas. And by and large, it's the same players that are towards the top of those lists, the same 10. So again, there's a very high um, consensus. Something that I think is emerging and taking higher importance, and I feel it, it's right that it should do so, is moving towards, moving further back up the supply chain in order to help to solve the problem. Being very clear that even though there are land-based and sea-based uh, routes that litter can reach, the oceans, that actually the solutions ultimately and the causes all lie on land. And, and moving towards a more circular economy has emerged much more strongly at this meeting than at any other similar meeting I've been at. It's, it's a very clear part of the picture. So, in my opinion, I think there's a very high degree of consensus amongst the audience about the problems and the solutions. And in that sense, I'm very optimistic that we can make some change. The thing, if you're going to ask the policy makers in a minute, because they must be faced with many different challenges like this. I feel there's an incredibly high degree of consensus in relation to this problem. It's not as though we're sitting in a room debating on one side, should we have nuclear power, and on the other, should we have wind farms and wave energy devices. We are all agreed on the problem and the solutions, and surely that must help us move towards a rapid change and progress right to the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we got uh, the first day, and uh, I think very inspiring and interesting presentation by Nancy from NOAA. And uh, I think uh, I would like to ask you, Nancy, to have made also some observations against the background of your experiences and what you probably <coughs> suggest or advise us uh, to do. Well, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak. Uh, I've been just extremely, extremely impressed with all the, the work that everyone's done over the past few days and all the work that you've been doing leading up to this conference. Um, a couple of things have come clear listening to the presentations again this morning is that this is an extremely complex issue, but as Richard said, there's a lot of agreement on the issue. Um, I think there's a lot of different levels of data in terms of gaps and sources and amounts and, and potential measures for the solutions, but what I've heard consistently is that the precautionary approach should apply, and that even though we don't have all of the answers right now, that certainly doesn't preclude us from moving forward to take action. Um, a lot of the same themes kept coming up over and over no matter which region you're in, waste management, education and outreach, reducing single-use packaging and items, and all those things are, are different levels of how to implement. I, you know, I just heard improving sewage systems. Well, that's a, that's a pretty intense, big effort, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. 
but other things like education campaigns can certainly be done and those should be done. So um, what I found just coming from the United States is that we face a lot of the exact same challenges. We face the exact same issues. Um, I'm extremely impressed by the ambition to set targets. That's certainly not a conversation that we've had in the US. Uh, maybe it's one we should have. I think we're a little further away from it potentially, but we'll continue to do the actions and just, um, I think the solutions that we heard yesterday, all of those wonderful, wonderful projects that are happening, it's extremely inspiring. I hope that those can be replicated in other places and expanded, and hopefully continue to bring together the community of people that are working on this issue to, to share that type of information. And I'm gonna leave and go back home extremely inspired and hopeful. And I'm just looking forward to seeing the results of how this all comes out, how you all implement these actions, and hopefully we can continue to share between our countries. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Nancy, and I hope uh, this will also uh, be a beginning for a more intense exchange of information between uh, your activities in the U.S. and what we are doing in Europe. From the U.S., we move uh, to, uh, to UNEP and to, the, uh, to GPA, and uh, I would like to ask Vincent, uh, what are your observations after the two days of intense work uh, uh, and what is probably a contribution uh, we can make for making your activities a success? Thank you. Um, some of the things that, that struck me personally during the last few days and, and was brought together actually in the presentations today are some of the similarities, in fact, quite, quite a bit of similarity among the different regional seas that were represented here. Um, I came to this meeting with limited knowledge of the issues and the differences between the seas, and um, I think it's been reinforced that there are a lot of uh, common issues, common actions. Um, it struck me also that the data and information gap or the, the limits that, that many complained about um, was striking from uh, the perspective of, of European countries. Uh, I grew up and in fact spent most of my life in, in the developing world and <coughs> we always had the impression that, that the Europeans were way ahead and, and that we needed to, to follow fashion and learn from them. And um, it, it really surprised me in some respect that, that there's still so many challenges and difficulties that are being faced even here in Europe. Um, I also was quite interested in the number of measures that were identified and uh, among the difficulties that, that were noted, um, one that struck me was the issue of enforcement. And again, um, most people who don't live in Europe figure that, that enforcement is not a problem in Europe because everybody seems to, to be conscious of and obey laws and regulations. And, uh, and then uh, another interesting discussion that took place in one of the groups related to the issue of um, the difficulty of banning or, or um, placing levies on, on um, for example, plastic bags. Um, the trend outside of Europe, um, maybe somewhat surprisingly, is that the, a lot of countries are in fact moving towards these measures which, which tend to be uh, harder on populations uh, whereas in Europe there seems to be some reluctance, and also in Canada, incidentally. Um, also the issue of awareness. Uh, again, we from the outside assume that, that the Europeans would be very much more environmentally conscious and aware of these issues, and the fact that there seems to be a lot of emphasis on awareness um, suggests that, yes, this is something that, that globally we have to deal with. Um, another issue related to some of the strengths and challenges of a European Union also struck me in that uh, because there is a union, there are ways of, uh, of collaborating and, and, um, and being uh, compelled to, to toe the line, so to speak. But at the same time, there are challenges. For example, the free movement of goods makes it difficult to implement uh, bottle taxes in different countries and so on. Uh, so, all of this said, uh, I've been thinking of how we can support the effort. 
and uh, I think because it is a priority of the GPA that, that there should be ways for us to facilitate cooperation. Usually we talk about South-South cooperation, but maybe in this instance we have an opportunity to facilitate North-North cooperation and also to, uh, to continue the dialogue through things like the partnership forum of the Global Partnership and also support for the regional seas um, in preparation of their action plans. Thank you very much. I think it's, uh, it became also clear what Vincent said uh, that we have to be interconnected with all levels. And I think this is something uh, where we have to make sure that we are not going to be disconnected uh, in this process. I would like to ask Alessandro uh, to make a few observations because uh, uh, we the part of industry you are representing is not the only one responsible for sea-based uh, sources. But uh, I would like to ask for your observations and what you're taking home from here. Uh, first of all, thanks for having the industry here. And uh, I heard many times in the past few days that the industry should be part of the solution and not only part of the problem and uh, I'm very glad to think uh, like that. It means that we can give uh, very good help. Uh, the example of Mr. Bieberg yesterday, I think it's illuminating. Uh, the, the system he was talking about roughly cost about, uh, let's say, 1 million euros more or less per ship and if you think that uh, in most of cases there is no uh, obligation from the legislation to put that kind of system on. If the industry decides to put it by its own wheels, it means that it wants to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Um, I, would, I would like to uh, point the excellent example of the Baltic and the non-additional fee system, or I would like to call it, uh, let's say, uh, omni-comprehensive fee, because in fact uh, ship orders are paying a fee, but uh, they are not asked to pay an additional part for garbage landing. And that was an excellent example. I really like to, find, to think about it as a banning virus that spread uh, all through Europe. It started, at, I think, 2002 with uh, Tallinn. I know because I was working on board back then. So. Um, and that should be the example for everyone. Because it's true that the industry wants to be part of the solution. But when you think that sometimes in some harbor you're asked to pay extra 20, 30,000, uh, sorry, 20, 30,000 uh, euros extra to land your garbage ashore. This for sure is a disincentive to ship owners to do it. And the best solution for many, of course, not for the shipping industry, is to, for the cruise industry is to throw it overboard. And uh, uh, so there's a lot of work to do there. The second, um, and of course, marble uh, concept of adequacy of port reception facility doesn't stop only to the capability of the port to receive. Uh, garbage, but it goes beyond that, especially with the last revision, and talks about uh, no delay to ships and no economic disincentive. Uh, the second observation I would like to make is as, as an individual, so I'm not uh, talking as part of the industry now. Um, yesterday, presentation of Mr. Amir from Israel said, uh, if you want the beach clean, then clean it. Uh, I would like to take the same example and say to the legislators, if you don't want the beach to be littered, don't allow it. And uh, I am uh, bringing the example of one of the most uh, advanced countries in the world, it is Australia. I love Australia very much. I go there almost every year on vacation. All uh, municipal beaches in Sydney uh, are, um, on all municipal beaches in Sydney, smoking is forbidden. So you cannot smoke. For sure, you cannot have cigarette butts there. Um, we, heard, we hear the word stakeholder many times. Um, not all the stakes are equal, to quote Orwell. You have a very powerful stake here as legislators. So uh, use it, please. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alessandro. Uh, I think. Uh, we have to remind ourselves that uh, cleaning up the beach is an end-of-pipe uh, solution. And uh, 
end of pipe solutions are not always uh, the most economic and uh, the most feasible one. In all of our uh, discussions, uh, we said also we need industry on board. And uh, therefore, I would like to ask Martin Engelmann about the, his observations. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, I think uh, through our um, commitment and participation here in the whole conference, we have shown that marine litter is one of the uh, true global problems that the plastic industry is facing so far. Marine litter has become one of our top priorities. And um, this global action plan I've mentioned yesterday truly shows uh, that we are here committed and uh, various uh, national and uh, regional levels. The uh, uh, projects uh, that were uh, established in 2011 have evolved and today we have increased a project number of 100, over 140 projects all over the globe with that. Um, I think the discussions, especially in the breakout sessions yesterday, have shown that improved waste management is the key uh, towards marine litter, to tackle the marine litter problem. Um, from my perspective, it's impossible probably to change consumer behaviors regarding littering if you have not a full uh, waste management system implemented. Um, and one of the key triggers to improve your waste management systems is, from our perspective, the phasing out of landfilling, in particular of high calorific waste. Only with a clear legal commitment uh, that landfilling will be phased out, you will receive higher recycling figures and more uh, efficient energy from waste productions. This requires, of course, joint efforts at national and EU level, and I hope many of you will participate in this activity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Martin Engelmann. Uh, uh, I can assure you uh, we will stay connected uh, on this uh, issue. And, uh, we, uh, we are very interested uh, when we are going to have, uh, on the EU level, a more intense debate about that, uh, that we have you on board and uh, get also your experiences uh, you have uh, to find uh, solutions. Last but not least, uh, one issue which was uh, really important to bring marine litter to the, uh, to the agenda and to raise awareness uh, was uh, the active involvement of uh, NGOs. I think this is uh, something what we have to, uh, to mention. And therefore, I am really interested uh, to get Kim's uh, observations uh, from the NABU side. Kim, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me to give some views. And I had the opportunity yesterday to give a, a brief introduction at what NABU is doing. And we decided three years ago that um, the marine litter issue is one of our main priorities in our field of marine conservation. And we try to support um, the different initiatives from our side by contributing to, to uh, beach litter monitoring, for example, and by, by our Fishing for Litter um, initiatives, and via our um, work on raising awareness in the general public. And maybe I can give you, and um, we heard during the last days, a very emotional discussion about the potential ban of plastic bags, for example. And maybe I can add some point, points um, regarding this um, aspect because we are contributing to the beach litter monitoring for two years now. And we run test tracks, uh, three test tracks on the Baltic island of Fehmarn and four test tracks on the Baltic uh, island of Rügen. And we, we have an average of items there on, the, on, on Fehmarn, about 92 items per 100 meter stretch, and on the island of Rügen about 130 to 140 litter items per 100 meter stretch. And the proportion of plastics on both sides is about uh, 75%. And if we look on the different items, we see that plastic bags uh, account for only 3% there. But this is not really surprising because 
we count their very small particles, about millimeters in size, in plastic bags as well. But we have also to, to state that we, um, um, that we have three to four plastic bags for each uh, stretch, for each uh, monitoring event. And we have the proportion of small, thin plastic bags is five times higher than, than for, for, big, for bigger um, plastic bags. And so I can only make here a stand to follow this approach of a plastic ban on text on, on, on plastic bags. And um, finally, I'm really um, surprised and, and I'm really happy about this constructive atmosphere here at this meeting at this conference. And I'm very, I'm, I'm, it's very promising to me and I hope that there is an impulse coming from this Berlin conference and that, that we, we, we keep on with the stakeholder involvement and maybe a last sentence to the plastics industry. I'm really happy to have the plastics industry here and I'm happy to see all this kind of different measures and, and projects. But let me make a stand for your real producer responsibility. And I think it's important to also discuss the reduction of plastic con consumption in general. And so I think there is your, your responsibility to, to, to um, address the, the, um, the product design and to make, um, to, to offer to the consumer products which are long living and which are repairable and which we keep in the, in the cycle. And so I think there is much work to do. Thank you very much. I think uh, you pointed the finger to, uh, to, uh, to an interesting issue, but we uh, should also be aware that uh, the, uh, the plastic bag issue is not overshadowing uh, the other serious parts uh, of marine litter. I think this is, uh, this is probably for uh, raising awareness for getting uh, this issue closer to the public important, but uh, it is it is a possibility to do that and not uh, uh, overshadowing uh, the other parts. I think all the activities you are doing, uh, you are not you stick not yourself to plastic bags. I know that, uh, but uh, this is something what is at the moment very popular also. Uh, in the, uh, in the press, and I hope we can misuse to make the, the issue uh, at all more popular and more aware in public opinion. Uh, what I forgot uh, to ask is uh, the, uh, the uh, shipping association of, uh, and uh, I would like at, uh, as the last uh, comment, observation, uh, to ask you uh, to make your observations, please. Yes, thank you very much. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody is away. Uh, it's a real honor for, for us uh, from the German Ship Owners Association as well as the European Ship Owners Association uh, to be here on this conference, as I have said earlier, uh, this is uh, really uh, a pleasure for me to listen to all these very interesting and constructive discussions. I have learned a lot, I can tell you, about all the details, the backgrounds uh, of Marilita, the full scope. And uh, we are in the shipping industry, as I have stated earlier, uh, fully aware of that problem. And we know that there is uh, also a huge uh, part of improvement possible in our business for sure. We are doing lots of steps forward. Uh, as I've explained under Marble 5, we have a complete ban uh, of plastics disposal uh, from this year on. Uh, and uh, we are very much looking forward for these measures, what you have identified for the improved port reception facilities for the no special fee system. And uh, I can assure you that I will take all these uh, very interesting items and matters back to our associations in the European discussions with our European members and as well to the International Chamber of Shipping, ICS, uh, with our work there at the IMO, really to improve this problem of marine litter. Thanks a lot.
Thank you very much, uh, Wolfgang Hinsche. I think uh, this is a point uh, where we uh, can go now for a coffee break. Uh, we, uh, the way forward had, to be, had been uh, presented. Uh, please make your comments. I think this is, this is important to really uh, come to a more comprehensive uh, paper and this paper will be fitting uh, in the various activities uh, uh, mentioned in the Mediterranean, in OSPA, but also in the Baltic and in the Black Sea and I also think that uh, within UNEP uh, we will uh, have an echo uh, uh, on that. Now uh, I remind you that uh, 10.30 we will start uh, the uh, high level segment. <coughs> we are not starting from scratch. This is an important message uh, to the politicians. They can, uh, they can, uh, they can go on to a uh, uh, running train and they can uh, take part in that. And also this message is important for the last round and uh, it would be good if you would be back 10.30 that we are not losing uh, time uh, this morning. Thank you very much and enjoy the coffee break.